This is Peter VK 3 by E, and once again, early Monday morning, Sunday afternoon in the States, and Sunday evening in Europe, you can ask me anything. We've got four people viewing, which is great, and welcome to Ask Me Anything. I'm Peter VK 3 by E. I uh, haven't got much of a program lined up. Now, last time we tried, Echo Link was highly successful. So we might try that a bit later on. Um, but we do have a question from Marcus um, Chester. Why Skywave propagation works in one area and the other? Well, Skywave is bouncing from the ionosphere, which is a certain amount of distance up and... If you go higher uh, than that, then you run out of ionosphere. And if you run, if you go lower than that, you also run out of ionosphere. So there's only a certain distance of height that signals bounce off. And at a particular angle of takeoff, that only allows communication between certain distances. Um, it depends on the ionization of the ionosphere. Um, with a higher layer like the F layer, that permits longer distance communication. Um, then there's the E layer, which is lower down, which is better for closer in shorter distances. Um, with, um, with something like the E layer, uh, if, the, if it's ionized very heavily, then it can allow short distances to be spanned, uh, maybe two, three, or 300 kilometers. Otherwise, if the propagation is fairly weak, then you've got enhancement, but it's only over longer distances of maybe 1,000, 1,500 kilometers. So, um, yep, the, um, to answer your question, the uh, distance depends on um, 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 things like takeoff angle and the uh, part of the ionosphere that your signal is bouncing from. Also, if you wanted to optimize longer distance communication, you would generally aim at a lower angle of radiation. Um, you would have antennas like high dipoles or vertical antennas that try to concentrate the radiation at the horizon. Um, if you want um, shorter distances of 500 to 1,000 kilometers or, or even less actually, um, particularly on 80 and 40 meters, then something like a low dipole, which has a um, uh, high angle of radiation, concentrates a lot of the energy straight up or at angles close to the either side, um, you can use that. Um, and that's um, different mechanisms uh, on the lower HF bands, then you can operate at night and get almost blanket coverage rather than the signal skipping over as it would on high frequency bands during the day. Although even that depends on the solar cycle. When we're near the bottom of the cycle like now, then there'll be frequencies like 7 megahertz and even 3.5 megahertz where signals will skip over at night. Um, whereas um, during a high sunspot year, then it might be more like blanket coverage, more continuous as uh, it can support high angle radiation. Now I've got a question on the uh, from Milan on the octagonal loop and actual location to um, attach the loop. This is when I used a gamma match type arrangement. And uh, to answer your second question first, no, it doesn't vary with the band. Um, you're lucky you can find a tap off point where it's you know the same for all the frequencies you're going to use. Um, and um, there was some, um, as for the actual location, well, it's a fixed, a fairly fixed location. I can't remember if it's 10% the way around the loop or 20% the way around the loop. I think it's, yeah, I think it's about 10% the way around the loop. Um, but when you do when you're trying a loop for the first time you might use an alligator clip or something just to make contact to various points along the metal loop you might even drill holes and try tapping points and whatever gives you the lowest vswr 
and it should be consistent on all bands uh, once you've adjusted the variable capacitor once you've got that onto resonance then that's where you make your tapping point permanent and why did i choose that form of coupling versus the coupling loop well um i reckon it was a bit easier um yeah it was just a bit of metal tapping off to it you could use a coupling loop sometimes with coupling loops um you need to squash them um you can make them out of coaxial cable um and that, that can work sometimes you need to squash the coupling loop or slightly reposition it to get lower vswr but no you can use either method um but i found the gamma match was uh, very successful and very easy and i had the material so that's why i did it so hope that answers your question and if you've just turned on this is q a and i'm peter vk 3 ye who is alive um and uh, what else have i been doing i've been uh, quite busy with other things so i haven't done a huge amount of radio construction um do you need to keep the gamma match wire at a certain distance from the loop yes um there is there will be some interactions so um yeah you it's a good idea to make it stiff wire so that if you flex the loop then the wire doesn't you know, change very much um just uh, having a look at echo link just um i'm in an urban area should i put up a, a black dog um should i put up a 30 meter end fed half wave in a horizontal configuration at 30 feet agl directly above the 12 foot roof or get a magnetic loop i'm contemplating both yep both is good but i think you'll get better performance from the end fed half wire on transmit um but yeah it's it's useful having uh, playing around with both um so you can switch between them you might even find the magnetic loop gives you better performance on receive and good day to scott um and uh yes yeah, sunny vk4 well well what's it going to do today here it's uh, going to be you know, fairly cloudy and uh, fairly cold um yeah so um yeah definitely uh yeah both both will be, uh, uh, will be okay. Um, the loop, you might get a bit better noise on, on receive. Um, um, you can you can have, if you've got noise coming from one source, you can use the loops null to good effect and uh, null it out. Um, but yeah, both will be um, 30 foot eight, uh, above ground level. That's a good height. So uh, yeah, you should do fine um oh yeah um what did i do I, on the weekend i was um fairly um don't think i'm i did have a couple of contacts have i played with um linear loaded antennas yet no i haven't um yeah um yeah the only contacts um radioactivity i did on the weekend which is quite good um you might have seen in a video where oh that's right it was only last saturday um I went, went to this ham fest and did a video of that and got some great stuff. Um, and one of the things I got was this Vinton um, land mobile radio that would have been used for taxis or fire or ambulance or whatever. Anyway, the VHF transceiver. Anyway, it was on the ground for nothing um, and uh, had no idea, you know, whether it was original or converted. Anyway, it turned out to be converted on two motors, even had crystals on two motors not only that but it worked so i've been leaving it on 146.5 megahertz which is our simplex calling frequency here in melbourne and i have been pleasantly surprised at the amount of activity um because you know people say oh people are on digital or people are on repeaters and whatever but if you leave it on all day you know um you know 95 percent of the time there isn't anyone on there but no i actually find there are actually contacts happening on 146.5 two meters fm simplex and um um yeah i've even had i've you know i've had heard people call i've had heard people having uh, uh, chats even uh, I, I left it on last night um and yeah woke me up about one o'clock this morning people were chatting on 146.5 um two meters simplex and uh, anyway, yesterday I heard um, 
a um, couple of guys up at Mount Donna Burang, which is probably about 80 kilometers or so northeast of here. Um, they were just using handhelds, and um, yep, yeah, uh, they were a bit weak. Um, so I went over to the other two meter rig because um, the AWA car phone, did I mention Vinton before? Anyway, um, AWA car phone was the radio I got at the hand press. Anyway, it's pretty old, like 1970s, and uh, modern rigs are a bit more sensitive. So I switched over to my newer rig and I could hear them very comfortably indeed. So yeah, a couple of stations up on uh, Mount Donna Burang. Um, and given that I'm near the sea not very many meters above sea level and my antenna is not much higher than that um i had a um some good simplex contacts um so yeah two meter simplex has been a lot of fun i'm thinking maybe i should make a dedicated antenna that i just leave on that transceiver and uh, yeah and be continuously monitoring 146.5 um yes yeah, so that's my main radio activities for the weekend although i did go on a um and we've got eight people looking and if you've just turned on this is ask me anything and i'm peter vk 3ye uh is there a preferred low noise way to wind balance or is receiving noise just a factor of the antenna length um i think it's more antenna position and directivity um i haven't done active experiments with this but I suspect if you had a wire that was like 10 metres from end to end and the both ends were like 10 metres or 15 metres tall, then you'd get much lower noise than if you had it as an inverted e, V with the wires 15 metres long and the uh, ends drooping to be down near the ground where all the other houses are and all the other consumer appliances and all that stuff. So I don't think it's to do with winding balance. Um, now, there is, uh, talking about noise, I was having a look briefly at a, uh, um, if you have a look at, um, do a search on Google, VK5BR, VK5 Bravo Romeo, uh, Lloyd Butler. He's done a lot of construction, and he's got an antenna noise canceller, which is one of these projects I'd like to build sometime. Um, that's where you have two antennas, uh, an antenna that picks up the noise and an antenna for receiving, and... Um, um a uh, um uh and then you try and uh, use phase methods you try and phase out the receiving um the noise and signal from the noise antenna and hopefully uh, uh suppress the noise through phase cancellation in fact um oh i did do something with radio um i tell a lie i forgot about it last week um i had a a bit x transceiver that i ordered Few years ago and i hadn't put it together anyway i did and had some contacts on 40 meters um why is a 40 meter loop sorry two points wider than a dipole sorry colin can't understand your question um so yeah um what else i built this little box switch box which i haven't uh, um um put in i i, I haven't got it on, on the air yet but this will be a box where you can switch between transmit and receive antennas um so that will be um um that'll be an interesting experiment to try i might make a video of that because a lot of transceivers um, in fact most you know transceivers apart from the the high-end transceivers um they only have one antenna socket which is pretty limiting um so if you could build a box it could be linked to the push to talk relay which often has an accessory socket coming out of the back of the transceiver you can use that to, to control a second relay and then you can have separate transmit and receive antennas so that um uh, so i've made a little box for that um uh, controlled by my ft817 so that will be an experiment um, to have separate transmit and receive antennas and colin okay quieter yeah okay 40 meter loop quieter than the dipole yeah a lot of people um like um yeah predictive text is is a pain um you know it, it spells worse than me i don't get rid of it um anyway um yeah loop a lot of people like loops um for noise cancellation um like folded dipoles are sort of an enclosed thing rather than um, um the ends just floating um so yeah um 
I think that's that's part of it. Um, things that electrically, it uh, uh, you don't have you know high vo voltage points just hanging. I, I think that's partly to do with it. Um, good day to Ivan um, and Paul P A one T A S. Good to have you on, and we're up to double figures, which is great. This is Ask Me Anything, and I'm Peter VK Three Y E. Um, and now, did I say? Oh, that's right. We um, uploaded a video quite recently yesterday. Um, it is from a telephone museum we've got in, in Melbourne. Um, it's only occasionally open. I think it might only be open on during the week. But anyway, on Saturday, it was open as part of Open House Melbourne, where a lot of public buildings and things that aren't normally open are thrown open so you can have a look around them and uh, um, a group of friends and I went, went around on trips around them and the first thing we went to was this um, a telephone exchange which had been Hawthorne um, east of Melbourne which had been converted to a telephone museum so yeah I've um, did a video on all that um, all the relays and things clicking in, in the uh, in the old manual exchange and lots of phones where people just have fun and phone each other and telegraph displays and all that. So check out my video on the VK3Y YouTube channel, what you're looking at now. Um, but it's my latest video where I look at a telephone museum. So that could be of interest. Um, and thank you for being who I am. Yeah, and uh, N5EJEIT. -E 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 so thanks for that. And uh, glad that you learned something. Um, now I am listening on Echo Link. Um, using the same one, like we, we tried Echo Link before. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes there's a bit of distortion, sometimes not. But I am listening to it's VK3MP-L, and the All Star node is four six two eight seven. Four six two eight seven. That's the All Star node. And the Echo Link node is VK3MP-L. And the number for that, I don't know if you need the number, but anyway, I'll give it to you. Um, like a telephone, 748-872. 748-872. So, yep, I am listening to Echo Link right now. Um, and um, what else have I... done um that is um I'm sure there's been a few little bits and pieces but yeah um um one project i, I was thinking of when i was just before i got up um, got up fairly late this morning it's um just after 8 a.m here in, in melbourne by the way on a monday morning and it's um should be afternoon um in the US and uh, late night or in evening in, in Europe. So hopefully this is a convenient time for you all. And we're a little bit quiet on the questions. So if you've got a question, now is a good time to ask it. Just uh, type it in text. Uh, Scott, um, near the water, when you're somewhere like a jetty, do you need to have the ground or counterpoise actually in seawater or is being nearby enough? Yeah, great question. Um, 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 it does help if you are near, if you're uh, really near the water, like you, you read up about Fresnel zones and things. Um, 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 you don't have to be in contact with the water. Like I've had success with, um, uh, I had some antennas that fairly, it might have been about three or four months ago. I. Did a um, did some antennas. I was, I was doing eighty meters. I was trying a T antenna um, where I had wire just running parallel to the salt water, and I had a ground tuning unit. Um, I was on a on a pier, and that worked great. In fact, no, I wasn't using wire. I was just clamping to the railing that was parallel to the water, and that worked fine. Um, um, and that was uh, straight over the water, so I think it was coupling into it. Uh, on the other hand, with my RAID antenna, pedestrian mobile antenna, I've done videos where I've, um, um, I'm wearing a aluminium ring thing that I made up and that just um, is held 
down into the water. I use Velcro and tie it to my ankle. And anyway, there's a big difference when I walk in the water, make contact with the salt water. Um, and also, um, I can walk out of the water and provided the sole of my foot is touching the wet sand, then um, there's a bit of an increase in signal. But when, um, when my foot isn't touching the wet sand, then the signal doesn't increase at all. And when it's on dry sand, it doesn't. So um, with that particular antenna, yeah, contact is important. Um, but yeah, otherwise being over salt water is, is good. Um, now, modding a zip cord antenna into a folded dipole, worth worth a try. I've never done it. However, however, I suspect that, I don't know, you've got all this capacitance between the two bits of zip cord. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm not sure if your dimensions are going to be near to formula. And I don't know if you'd have loss through, you know, coupling, you know, because the two bits would be very coupled together and you've got the, uh, I don't know, the dielectric con um, properties of the poor quality plastic between the two wires. So, yeah, it could be worth a try, but um, I don't know if its impedance will be anywhere near the 288 ohm that a folded dipole normally is. Um, and uh, if you're using zip cord as a feed line, I think that might have a impedance of around 70 or 100 ohms, something like that. Um, so maybe you'd need a, some sort of ballon, um, four to one, two to one or something at the top. But yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure about the advantages, but however, however, I remember seeing, now it might've been the cobweb antenna, it was, can't remember if they used zip cord, but it was a, a multi-band antenna that looked like an Australian clothes hoist. It was basically, if you couldn't, um, didn't have the room to put in lots of dipoles, I think that might have used zip cord. I uh, can't remember if it's folded dipoles or straight dipoles, but yeah, it used wire bent in a shallow U shape, um, and they were in parallel and connected to the feed line, and they were set up for four or five bands on HF. But you could, I, I, although you could rotate it around, I think as a dipole being bent around, it was fairly omnidirectional. Um, but yeah, there, there might have been um, one of the cobwebs or something, might have been one of those antennas. Um, there has been a, an antenna and, I, and that may well have used zip cord. So there, there, there'll be a few designs and things online for that. Um, and... Uh, yeah, and we are still listening. Um, this is VK3YE live. Um, if you want to have a look at my blog, I do put out a blog every day. It's called the Daily Antenna, dailyantenna.blogspot. So there's a post every day on various aspects of, I, I started off with antennas and then uh, ran out of topics. So I've broadened to include more radio stuff as well. So I hope you enjoy it, uh, Daily Antenna. Um, with a post every day, uh, dailyantenna.blogspot.com. And I'm listening to Echo Link, node VK3 MP L 748872. Um, if there's anyone on, or, or star node 46287. Um, and uh, this is Ask Me Anything, and I'm Peter VK3YE. And there's a mirror. Okay, we've got 10 viewers, so um, not quite as... Um, can a spiral counterpoise be multi-band? Good question. Haven't actually tried it. Um, I suppose you could try your ground tuning unit and tune it. Um, that, that would be an interesting experiment, actually. I haven't done as many experiments as I should with tuned counterpoises. Um, um, I wonder if you could tap off bits of the spiral if, if you didn't want to tune them. Um, not sure. Um, but people have used spiral counterpoises. Um, in fact, it's okay if, you know, I've, I've heard of an antenna that I think it was designed to be used on boats or something. Anyway, it was limited space. So it had the main radiating element was quite tall. Um, 
it might have been a full size quarter wave length or something. And at right angles, there was a counterpoise that was spiral. Um, and that provided a um, vertical, vertically polarized antenna in not much room. So um, but I think that was only single band. But you know, you, you might be able to tap it like people tap mobile rips and uh, get it to work on multiple bands or tune it or compress and expand its turns. I'm not sure. I've never tried it. Did I work any QRP in the IOTA contest from VK3 MH? Um, uh, no, sorry, I wasn't wasn't on air at all um, on the weekend. I was um, I had a birthday party on Saturday night, and I was out pretty much all Saturday and Sunday. Oh yeah, yesterday I was out as well. So yeah, no, um, I was uh, hardly hardly in um, on the weekends, but five con countries on CW. Yeah, IOTA con um um okay so it's spider man. Um all five countries is pretty good going. Um um yeah of course we do have some islands near Melbourne that qualify for IOTA, Island of the Air. Uh, we've got um Phillip Island so it's, I suppose it's a bit cheating because um you know there's a road bridge and you can drive onto it. But uh French Island um um which I did a video a few years back. Um, it's an uninhabited island. Well, no, it's not uninhabited. There's about 100 people on it. It's not part of any local government area. There's one general store. I'm not sure if there's a school, but anyway, it is very rural, unsettled. The roads are not paved. There's no police or government or anything. Um, that, that's French Island, and you can get a ferry to it from not far from here. So that's a very quiet location um and colin um at the home brew meeting arnsw we talked about a qrp uh hookup from sydney group um and note that uh, vk2 emu can talk to me so thanks for that colin i know that uh, peter vk2 tpm uh we've organized um and had qrp by the bay days simultaneously so uh yep yeah. Um, get in contact with me. Our next QRP by the Bay will be in early November. I'm not sure. Haven't set a date yet. Um, there's a local ham fest in Rosebud um, around that month. So, you know, probably a, a couple of weeks away from that so that we don't crash. So, uh, yeah, we uh, had a, um, uh, for those who are watching, um, yeah, QRP by the Bay is sort of a social event that uh, um, QRP is gathering, showing tell their equipment and usually get on the air and uh, by the beach um so yeah early early november column uh, somehow um hw16 tube transceiver um i want to build a simple vfo can you direct me to a simple basic version i could you could build well why i would suggest try um try a vxo first you can get some crystals from uh, sometimes see them from eBay. There's um, a place called Expanded Spectrum Systems. If you get two crystals, put them in parallel and get a um, uh, experiment with various inductors in series with them and then a variable capacitor, um, you might be able to get a pretty good amount of frequency agility with that. Um, you, know, you might be able to get 10 or 20 kilohertz, which is pretty good. Um, and if you've got a selection of crystals for different frequencies, you might not need to build the VFO circuit at all. Um, you might, however, get chirping um, if there's um, if you try and swing it too much. So that's just something cheap and simple, and I, I'd suggest trying that first up. Um, but um, as far as a simple VFO circuit, well, you could either use a DDS unit, um, go all high tech with a digital display, nice and stable. Um, you could just use a culprits VFO circuit. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I did a video um, on making a simple, I think I only made a simple variable crystal oscillator. It was a basic electronics thing where uh, I went through step by step of building this simple RF oscillator. But yeah, um, you could make that into a VFO. Uh, one of the issues is that you're trying to couple it into a valve um, transceiver. Um, you might be able to, you might need to, or transmit it, you might want to modify the oscillator tube, um, change the connection somehow, 
so that you have it operating as a buffer that amplifies the signal from the solid state VFO. You might need something to step up the voltage of the um, output, you know, to couple transistor circuitry into valves. You might need, um, I don't know, some sort of step up transformer or even amplifier um, to uh, get it up to the level that the valves require. Um, so, yeah, um, um, so yeah, building the VFO is one thing, coupling it right into your subsequent vacuum tube stages is another. Um, I have done it before years and years ago, um, and I had a solid state VFO and valve final, so yeah, you can definitely do it. Um, I want to 0022J, uh, I want to build a multi band vertical capable of 100 watts. What wire, strand, or solid? Um, I don't have a lot of experience, but I, I reckon either, either should be okay. Um, just don't go too thin. Um, you know, reasonably thick, like a millimetre should be fine. Um, and if you've just turned on, this is Ask Me Anything. And I'm Peter VK3YE, and you can uh, type your questions and I'll try and answer them. And um, Okay, we are also listening to... Um, Oh, what else? Um, um, I have uh, VK3MH. The junk box video is popular. A few from NERG were talking about it. Um, a curiosity show, a popular format for the video. Yeah, um, people seem to like it. Like, if you look at, um, um, in fact, I, I could do how about, how about we, how about we have a impromptu? The, the lighting is terrible. We'll see if we can do an impromptu curiosity video. Um, but yeah, it, it is a popular format. It's uh, very, doesn't require much preparation to do, but yeah, people seem to like it. Um, I'm thinking of, um, you know, like Dave Jones' um, EEV blog, um, you know, has a mailbag sem segment where people send in mail. Um, I, I don't get um, sort of the, the mail that he does, but. Um, uh, I've got not, uh, plenty of stuff here that we could um, go through. So uh, we will um, we will un right under here are some boxes. So we'll, we'll have a look through those. Um, uh, and uh, may maybe it should be a separate video, but anyway, um, we'll have a quick look here. Uh, homemade DDS, I see very low max drive is spec on any 612 but don't see problems with 300 millivolts or so um i think that should be okay i don't know off the top of my head but yeah the any 602 doesn't need much drive and uh g'day to ian g7 hfs uh wa30 peter good to have you on beach 40 squeals between transmit and receive with earphones yeah it, it is an issue um yeah, some sort of better switching audio muting circuit. I haven't done any, you know, uh, further refinement of it. But yeah, if you're able to somehow mute the audio, some people have used pin seven of the LM386 as some sort of muting circuit. Um, there might have been something published in Sprat. Um, um, but yeah, um, uh, maybe even have um, some people have a FET at the input of the LM36 that uh, acts as an audio mute that basically short circuits things. Um, now, if the screw comes from the microphone, then maybe even something that mutes the microphone circuit. Um, because, yeah, the Beach 40 um, switching is pretty crude. I'm just switching the power and the antenna connections and not switching any of the audio connections. So that can result in uh, squealing um, for a short time when you switch between things. It's uh, a very simple bare bones transceiver. Um, okay, let us have a look at what is in this box. Um, okay, at the suggestion of VK3MH, um, we'll have a, uh, let's see if we can bring some more light. We'll just have a look. This is one of the boxes of junk that um, uh, we'll go through. Not from a ham fest. Well, some things might have been from a ham fest, but um, anyway, we have a telephone, an Aussie phone, and it's been pulled apart. So let's have a um, let's have a play with that. Um, and there's a nice big coil there. Uh, AWA 
1700 ohm coil. I wonder what the inductance of that would be. Oh, now if I press this, if I pull this out. Uh, now, where is it? Um, anyway, I've got one hand holding the camera and the other. Anyway, these are beautifully built phones. Here's the bells. Um, um, yeah, beautifully built, really solid. Um, got a nice printed circuit board there and the relay. Not much in them, but, yep, this is a Aussie dial phone. Um, what do we got here? This is a oh, circuit board. It looks like a video modulator. Um, a couple of crystals on it. Um, oh, I think it's a set-top box, something like that. Um, a crystal there for 27 megahertz. There's another one for another frequency I can't quite see. But, yeah, mostly surface mount bits and pieces, but, yeah. Um, this looks like another one looks pretty same and you know, pretty much the same as before. Uh, the other crystal is 24 megahertz. By the way, if you have a 24 megahertz crystal, um, if you put it in a VXO circuit, um, of course, 24 times six, I think is 144 megahertz. And if you put it in a low capacitance, um, VXO circuit, then you can get just inside the two motor band. Talking about the two meter band, this is a bandpass filter I built for two meters. Um, I had a, uh, I built a transceiver for two meters. Um, actually, no, it was only a transmitter, crystal controlled. And anyway, I wanted something to clean up its output. And this is what I had. Um, so there's the uh, coils salvaged from some other thing and little trimmer capacitors. Um, I have not used this for decades, but yep, bandpass filter on two meters. Um, what else do we find? Well, it's another phone. In case you're wondering, this is Ask Me Anything, and this is a on request um, random mystery box video, thanks to VK3MH. And what is this? Well, I think I just salvaged, salvaged this for the power socket. Um, cordless phone aka a VHF low band transmitter. Uh, what have we got here? This looks like out of a clock radio with a display there. A uh, tiny little right, right antenna. It's, it's smaller than the usual ones. But yet yeah, you always save them because there's a uh, variable capacitor. Um, it's got an IC there for the, uh, um, the AM and FM chip and some of the other stuff. So yeah, a little... What is this? What is this this uh one and zero some switches oh i must have just saved it for the clock uh, solar panel i think it must be some sort of garden light um what do we got um dvd player video uh, okay well i haven't got that open and i'm not going to so we'll leave that um okay cigarette lighter um, oh, there's all this stuff that's written on here on the side of this phone. Don't know if you can read it. All these numbers. Uh, emergency dial, police D24. It was in the uh, 11444. So, yeah. Um, ambulance 11440, fire 792044. This is in the, in the days where they were, before they were eight digit phone numbers. You had Lifeline, RSPCA, gas emergency. ECC emergency, Monash Hospital, Frankston Hospital. So, oh, there's very um, particular businesses. I wonder if any of them are in um, in uh, business. But uh, uh, this sticker is called Tele Stick, and it's got very specific electrician, gymnasium. It's like someone's custom done this sticker for whatever pizza delivery, plumber, etc. Anyway, um, let's delve and see what else is in this box. And in case you've just turned on to this crazy video, it is Ask Me Anything, and I'm Peter vk 3 yt um, Yeah, it's the charging thing for the mobile phone. The curly cord. Oh, there's a tr transformer there. Yep, little power transformer. Could be handy for something. Um, oh, Uniden little bike pack. Oh, not much in this box. Yes, yeah, some of the other boxes have more stuff. But anyway, that was a quick look at junk. And 
Um, okay. Uh, OZ9 ADD, glad to, that I'm being heard and watched in Copenhagen. Um, 2E0RWE, g'day, Andy. High tech transistors in the cans. Um, I didn't see any, but yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, this is Peter VK 3 ya We've got a little bit too much light. We are also monitoring Echo Link, um, which we tried before. Um, but I am monitoring VK3MP-L, and um, the all-star node is 46287. 46287, all-star mode, and echo link node is 748872. 748872VK3MP-L, which is what I'm monitoring on echo link. Anyway, um, um, 8.35 a.m. We've been going a while, so... Um, Yep, um, now it's a good time to ask questions. Um, um, we've got uh, 11 viewers so far, so uh, that's good. Um, if there are no further questions, we'll uh, wrap it up and uh, I'll get on with the rest, rest of the day. What have we got here? Just getting bits and pieces off the bench. Oh, this was um, a little... Oh, that's right. Uh, thing I did... Um, uh, I described it in a video before. Um, oh, in fact, on my website, if you go to my website, vk3y.com, and uh, in the equipment section, I look at the BitX, not the micro BitX, but the BitX, the earlier one that... Um, just did 40 meters, and this is a coil, little toy from the BitX because I converted it to operate instead of continuous coverage, or sorry, instead of VFO coverage across the whole 40 meter band. That was that is unstable with a free running oscillator. There are various fixes to sort that out, but in the end, I used instead a um, ceramic resonator for 4.92 megahertz, and that works because the IF of the BitX is 12 megahertz. So the difference between that and 4.92 puts you on the 40 meter band and using the ceramic resonator as a VX. So you can't cover all the band, but it um, gives you better frequency stability. So yep, this is the uh, um, toy that I took out of the BitX. Um, so I no longer needed it for it being replaced by the ceramic resonator. Um, so yeah, that's the, the main uh, technical work I did. And I did, um, if you are building the BitX, a couple of other mods I suggest that I talk about, um, and that is shifting the carrier oscillator because although they come pre-aligned from India, I, I don't reckon the carrier oscillator is, is right. Um, it's somewhat too muffled. And if you take out, and what I ended up doing was I, did I take out one capacitor and add another capacitor? Or maybe I just added another capacitor. Anyway, I talk about it in a lot of detail in the video I did for it. But yeah, by shifting the um, frequency of the um, beat oscillator or the carrier oscillator, it reduces the carrier that leaks through and also gives me more high frequency parts of my voice. And that improves readability, makes the audio a bit less muffled and it gives you a bit brighter audio on receive. So if you're after communications quality, which is a good idea for QRP gear, then that's a good little mod to do. Just needs one um, ceramic capacitor. Um, and the other mod I did was the microphone amplifier um, biasing. Um, as it comes, I don't think it's very good and I'm not the only one. It's, it's a bit soft in gain. So there's a couple of resistor values that um, you need to change and the although it's surface mount in the bit x you can um, there's enough room for me to add normal through hole resistors instead just to remove the surface mount bits and again um, that's another video that I, I talk about so um, yeah that, that was my fiddling um, late last week um, and that was successful and had some contacts on the bit x 40 um, 
Okay, this is Ask Me Anything, and I'm Peter VK3YE. And I think everyone now, uh, and uh, cheers to VK3MH, and hope you enjoyed that little unboxing thing. Um, there's quite a, quite a few other boxes here, so um, yeah, I could make that a, uh, a feature of other live videos, so uh, just remind me, if, if you want to have a look at what's inside one of these things, we can uh, certainly oblige. Um, so, uh, yeah, without any further questions, I'll uh, um, uh, thanks all for viewing and listening, and uh, um, if you are watching this after um, after this has been live, yep, I occasionally do live videos. Um, I think Monday morning, very early Monday morning, um, here in Melbourne is, is a good time for people in Europe and America. It's still Sunday over there, so um, um, yeah, um, this is probably around the best time, maybe a little bit earlier um, or uh, um, normally up earlier than this. So uh, yeah, thanks all for viewing and uh, um, enjoy the rest of the day. This is VK3YE ending the stream and going clear.